We are uh, now going to ABC News for some uh, national news of note and, and a tragic night uh, for the ABC family. Of good life. End quote. Peter's family's strength, caring, and love have sustained and comforted Peter over recent months. And with him as well were the prayers and the love and the great respect of all of us at ABC News who worked with Peter during his 41 years here. But it was not just those of us who worked with him who felt such a personal bond with Peter. Since he courageously told everyone of his cancer in early April, there has been an outpouring of emails, gifts, letters, expressions of support, and just plain good wishes from viewers that overwhelmed everyone here, but most importantly, overwhelmed Peter and gave him great strength. It was simply a virulent and terrible form of lung cancer that Peter faced. He was a man of iron will. He was, as anyone who competed with him on a story will tell you, fiercely competitive, and he had an enormously strong constitution, all qualities that served him well. He put up a tremendous battle with this disease. During his illness, the good news was he would often call in with suggestions, comments, and criticisms about a World News Tonight broadcast. His involvement in World News Tonight, the program that he loved so deeply, was considerable right up until the last days of his life. Peter did it all. He reported from every corner of the globe. No one in this business understood events overseas better than Peter. There is probably not a world leader of any consequence in the past 35 years that he did not interview. Whenever there was a major event in the world on which to report, Peter reported it. It is virtually impossible to properly summarize the career of a man who did so much over so many years. However inadequate to the task, we have tried. News tonight with Peter Jennings this evening reporting from Washington. Good evening. The fate of Korean Airlines Flight 7 continues to anger. But he was our anchor, our mainstay, off the air as well as on. Peter could transform confusion into clarity and, keep you abreast of what's been going on. and make the exercise appear effortless. We are going to stay on the air until NASA tells us what it knows. He set standards for us and he never stopped raising them as he helped audiences understand the major events of our time. Someone actually reached up and handed me a small piece of the wall that they had chipped away. It's those small moments that make up this extraordinary day. ABC News President David Weston, in a tribute, wrote, The void Peter leaves cannot be described, but as much as we miss him, Peter Jennings will always be with us at ABC News, in our history, in who we are, in what we do, in the stories we care about. Peter's own story here at ABC spanned more than 40 years, and it encompassed both a unique era in broadcasting... Ten seconds. Quiet, please. ...and the extraordinary parallel story of a young man who made a stunning comeback from his own premature success. Violence is not a problem peculiar to any one particular area of the country. Peter was a Canadian, born in Toronto. His father, Charles Jennings, was a prominent radio news reporter and anchor there, and Peter followed him into our business. At the age of nine, Peter was already hosting his own weekly children's radio show. Was it your boyhood ambition to always be in broadcast? Without question. It was. In the top of the news, a cold-blooded killing... He dropped out of high school for a full-time radio job because he was so passionate about working in broadcasting. Also, he said, because at the time he was bone lazy. A view from Canada from uh, Peter Jennings. There was something about him and his poise on the air. The Meredith March began in Memphis, Tennessee three weeks ago. And it ABC noticed his work in Canada and hired him as a correspondent in 1964. One of his assignments was covering the civil rights movement in the South. At about 1.15 this afternoon, a lone Negro came down and tried to enter the Lester Maddox cafeteria. We can't take the 10-second roll from the... Then, in an extraordinary move that said a lot about the desperation of a third-place news division on a third-place network, Peter was made anchor of ABC's Evening News when he was only 27. Two, one. Peter Jennings with the news. Good evening. Conrad Adenauer is dead. And said, so, Peter, I want you to come back and take over the 6 o'clock show. And I gather he was startled and he said, uh, you're kidding. He said at the time, ABC was into kids programming like Gidget. And Peter joked, I think everybody said, let's go kids across the board. 
Even then, he had a sense of humor about it. No makeup out of the eyes. I won't let the makeup man make up underneath my eyes because I begin to develop, you know, just very slight sort of 27-year-old bags under my eyes. And I think, aha, you see, I'm beginning to look a little more distinguished, a little more convincing. And with clear foresight, Peter was already hedging his future possibilities. I'm young enough if I blow it, I can go back and start over again. That is exactly what he had to do. The experiment didn't work. America wasn't ready for an anchor so young. That failure, however, helped define who Peter would become. We cannot see them, but we can certainly hear them. The Israeli helicopters. It also formed the core of the advice he gave to every young reporter to do what he did in 1968, become a foreign correspondent. The great beating of their blades, indicating without a shadow of a doubt that the Israeli operation in this area of the Ark Kub in South Lebanon on the slopes of Mount Hermon is definitely continuing. Peter went to the Middle East, established the first American television news bureau in the Arab world, and spent 10 years becoming a world-class reporter. This is Peter Jennings, ABC News, in the Golan Heights. There is nothing so constant in the Middle East as the sight of refugees. Those of us close to Peter know he remained sensitive about never finishing high school, but he compensated for it by becoming a student of the world. I lived in the Middle East for a long time, and I, the one thing I learned after living there was that there is no one absolutely essential truth for all people. And that every time I look at a coin, I instinctively want to look at the other side. We interrupt this program to... When terrorists took Israeli hostages during the 1972 Munich Olympics, Peter immediately brought a context to the coverage that came from his years of experience. Peter Jennings is inside the village. Let's go to Peter now. If I were to guess at the moment at which of the commando organizations this group is to come from, I'd be most likely to narrow in on a group called Black September. We happened to hit right where Peter lived. Rune Arledge, Peter's future boss at ABC News, was then executive producer of the Olympics. And when you're talking about Al Fatah and Black September and these things which were alien concepts to most Americans, and certainly to most of the people working on the Munich Olympics, uh, Peter knew all of that. One of the histories of the Palestinian operations like this is a history of failure. And he gave the viewers of the Olympics a dimension that they just had never had before. Israel and the Arab countries is like one of the evil pendulums of history which just goes back and forth and back and forth. As anchor of World News Tonight, Peter said again and again that context, why something happens, is what's truly important to us. Well, there is something that every Lebanese man and woman fears more than any shelling. It is the car bomb. His experience in the field had given him a broad sense of history, and he used the broadcast to apply it to daily events and to give them deeper meaning. Just one picture will tell you how wretched man can be to his fellow man. There was this wounded girl, and there were at least 14 people killed. Now, I decided that on that one day, we would just stay with that little girl. I didn't get a lot of letters from people. The phone ran off the hook. Some people said, how can you do that at the dinner time? Our children are watching. <clears throat> what do you do? I don't really know what you do. There's so much violence in our lives and so much violence in our world. I don't think people think about violence. I don't want to be in a position of sanitizing the news. This is called, I think, the secret garden. Peter also brought his knowledge into his decades of interviews with world leaders on issues that were timeless. Is there, in fact, no way in which Israel can have the security it requires and you can have the honor you demand? And some that cut straight to the headlines. Will you release the hostages and when will you release them? Overseas today, here in London and also in other worlds. Peter had begun anchoring again in 1978 when he moved to London and became part of a three-man anchor team that included Frank Reynolds in Washington and Max Robinson in Chicago. Israel says today it shot down 22 Syrian fighter planes Five years later, in 1983, he returned to New York to become the sole anchor of the broadcast. Two more Americans, one Marine and one CB, have been wounded in Beirut. The job that lasted the rest of his life. It was also the beginning of a new phase of discovery for Peter, discovering America. We've come to Detroit for two days to focus on jobs and the American worker and what the American... And he set about it with the same dedication he'd applied overseas, but he had to learn fast. His U.S. election night coverage in 1984, just after returning from Europe, was shaky by his own admission. Peter, in Minnesota, we did call the Senate race a Rudy Boschwitz a Republican. Yeah, I meant to say president. Right. I say yes, the president we have not. 
Co-anchor David Brinkley wasn't even sure I knew who the faces belonged to, said Peter. And he was right. We're joined in our election headquarters now by Dr. Henry Kissinger, former national security advisor to President Reagan. I don't want uh, President Reagan to have a heart attack. I was not security advisor to President Reagan. I beg your Reagan. pardon, President Nixon, you're quite right. <laughs> So Peter dedicated himself to learning American politics. Governor Clinton went out and forced President Bush to campaign where he did not early on expect he was going to have to. David, you've got some Senate calls, I think. I do indeed, Peter. Begin. Throughout the years, said one producer, Peter didn't go to parties. He stayed in his room and studied the loose leaf binder that was crammed with details about issues and candidates. Dan Quayle, where is he? We haven't seen him. Well, today he went back to his hometown dentist to get his teeth cleaned. Hello? Two minutes! In the newsroom, Peter's enthusiasm was palpable to all of us and contagious. The job was always an adventure to him. He once tried to remember when he'd been bored and decided so it was never more than for half an hour at a time. Week. Very often we come upon people making a difference. In quite Stories are essentially about people and that the best way to tell other people about what's happening is through the lives and the attitudes of people you encounter. Live from around the world, a celebration Peter could also scare the hell out of a lot of us. Before we scattered around the world to cover the coming of a new millennium, Peter came up with questions, questions, and more questions for each reporter at each location. And he expected everyone to know the answers. He made it one of the most exhilarating live broadcasts ever devised. Happy New Year to you all across the country. We're going to try to share this extraordinary occasion with much of the rest of the world. And with the advent of international television, uh, we all share in each other's experiences. And that means that it has an impact on all of our attitudes. I think that's when I feel, A, that I have a very big responsibility, and I also think that's when I feel really great about what I'm doing. He invoked the words of Martin Luther King Jr. when he said, let freedom ring, and this is what it looked like. The government has now shut down the entire air traffic system in the United States. On 9-11, he used every ounce of his reserve. Many viewers and many of us who worked with him thought that his unforgettable presence, sifting through the chaos, measured and straightforward, was his finest hour. It is a tragedy that has revealed itself before the eyes of millions of people in the country watching on television. The worse things get around me, the cooler I tend to be. I tend to focus very hard under pressure. Well, I've seen it's been repeated hundreds and hundreds of millions, as far as we know, thousands of times. But I have indeed lost it on television. I almost lost it a couple of times on 9-11. Uh, most specifically, when I turned around to find that my children had called from two parts of the country, I think it made me think of a lot of families and their children. I checked in with my children, and it, uh, who were deeply uh, distressed, as I think young people are across the United States. And uh, so if you're a parent, you got a kid in some other part of the country, call him up. In May of 2003, partially because of 9-11, he said, and partially because of a book he was writing, In Search of America, Peter Jennings finally became an American citizen. Unlike any other nation in the world, America is an idea. That I will support and defend. We are a nation of immigrants, I'm one of them, who have come here because they believed in the ideas and could somehow contribute to the ideas and be themselves in ways that you couldn't be quite anywhere else. So help me God. You could know Peter well and still be amazed at what he would do next. He had faith, when many others did not that millions of Americans would tune in for a three-hour documentary seeking historical Every truths about the life of Jesus. What was the status of Jesus' movement at this point? Did he, did he have a great many followers? I don't think he had. Subjects like this one didn't lend themselves to an evening news format. But as Jesus was growing up here... So Peter extracted a commitment from the network to investigate those topics in primetime documentaries. He reported on the continuing U.S. involvement in the military conflicts in South East Asia after the Vietnam War. They get much of their aid from the United States, most of it secretly. He explored Little League Baseball as a means of understanding the hopes and dreams of Americans. I see great things in baseball, said the poet Walt Whitman. It's our game, the American game. 
but we have provisions. He also sought to confront issues in which he felt government had failed to protect its citizens, including one with which he was personally familiar, the most preventable public health problem in the country, smoking. In the six years since the McCain bill failed, the Congress has not passed a single piece of tobacco control legislation. And two and a half million more Americans have died from smoking. Peter had smoked most of his adult life. In the 60s, it wasn't unusual to see cigarette smoke rising from his anchor desk while he was on the air. He quit in the mid-80s, but admitted relapsing during 9-11. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York. On April 5th of this year, he made an appearance on World News Tonight to explain why he had been absent from that show and from recent international events that we all knew he would otherwise have insisted uncovering. He had been diagnosed with lung cancer. I've been reminding my colleagues today, who have all been incredibly supportive, that almost 10 million Americans are already living with cancer, and I have a lot to learn from them. And living is the key word. The National Cancer Institute says that we are survivors from the moment of diagnosis. Despite debilitating treatments, Peter continued to make his presence felt through emails and messages and visits to the newsroom. He cared too much about the life he had pursued so intensely to pull back from it. And when he was resting at his home on Long Island on his birthday, July 29th, we, his colleagues, made sure he knew what we were thinking. He looked up and saw a plane and a banner with the wishes of all of us who wanted to have him back. As for how he viewed his role, Peter described it 40 years ago when he was still on the verge of an extraordinary career. I'm fascinated by everything. There's just too much going on in too many places that I just daren't miss. He meant every word, and then he lived it. And we will miss him. You've been listening to the latest news from ABC Radio. This is Peter Jennings, ABC New York. And as we said, Peter Jennings died tonight of lung cancer. And I must tell you from a personal standpoint, it is it is difficult to watch the pictures because his presence here as our leader and as our anchor was a given. And it is a shock to realize that he will not be here again. Of all of those that you see on the air broadcasting for ABC News, Peter had been here the longest with one exception. Peter came to ABC News in 1964, preceded by one year by Ted Koppel, who is joining us by phone tonight from the Washington area. And Ted, I suspect your thoughts go back to the early days. Well, they do, Charlie. Uh, he and I joked the last time I went up to visit him, just a few days ago, that between the two of us, we'd put in 83 years at ABC News and Peter's professional side. But I do feel the need to say uh, that he was a warm and loving and surprisingly sentimental man. Uh, you touched on the issue that he, he actually quit when he was, I think, in the middle of his sophomore year in, in college. Uh, and for the rest of his life, and I do mean for the rest of his life, uh, he always regretted the fact that he had dropped out of school. And he used to travel when he was overseas uh, with whatever else he needed for his trip, and always he had with him one extra suitcase that was filled with books. He was a student for the rest of his life, even though he had dropped out so early. Uh, not even because he had dropped out so early. Uh, and I think if there's one message that Peter would like to leave behind for young people today, it is don't do what I did. Uh, the only part of what he did that has to do with those early days that I think he would be happy to pass on to everyone else is this tremendous sense of determination that he had. Those were two very uncomfortable years for him in uh, 1966, I guess, from 66 until 68, when he was the anchor. He wasn't ready for the job, and he was the one, ultimately, who went to his boss and said, you know, this is not right. I need to go off and, and learn it from the ground up. And as you pointed out, he then spent 10 years overseas. It, it is interesting, Ted, that you make reference to his fascination with books. And 
Peter as a student. If you go down to his office just a floor below where I sit right now, uh, I think it would do some college libraries proud to have the kind of collection uh, uh, of, of textbooks and of uh, commentary on different parts of the world. And I remember very well hearing of the day that Peter went to speak at his daughter Elizabeth's graduation from high school here in New York. And he turned to her and said, really moved, you have done something that I was not able to do to graduate from high school. He did indeed put a great deal of emphasis on education. But those early days at ABC, Ted, were rocky to say the least. Uh, well, it's, it's an indication, as you suggested earlier, Charlie, of how rocky they were uh, that ABC News turned to a 26-year-old to anchor the broadcast. Uh, you've, uh, you've seen and our audience has seen and looking uh, even as we look now at some of those early pictures of Peter Jennings, he was a stunningly handsome man. Uh, bore a not slight resemblance to Roger Moore during the time that he was playing 007. Uh, and oh, what a, what a heartbreaker he was. I remember on one occasion uh, on that first two-year tour of anchoring, he went around the country on a promotional tour uh, and some young woman from our affiliate, I think it was in Denver, had said, Peter, will you marry me? And jokingly, he said yes. And when he got to Denver, there she was at the foot of the ramp of the plane, <laughs> dressed in a bridal gown. <laughs> Ted Koppel, thanks very much. I met Roger Moore once, and he said to me, I'm a proud contestant in the Peter Jennings Lookalike Contest. There you go. All right, thanks very much, Ted Koppel. Barbara Walters also joins us on the phone. And Barbara, as we had just a moment to talk before we went on the air, you were talking about the fact that so often you and Peter showed up at the same stories. Uh, we did very often, but you know, first, Charlie, uh, we all knew how, how sick Peter was, but, but tonight when we heard the news, I think it's heartbreaking for all of us. We, we just, prayed that he would make it and and my love and uh, i don't know what we can send our deepest sympathy to his wonderful wife casey and and those children elizabeth and christopher whom he was so crazy about uh, well peter and i i i have only been at uh, abc 30 years so i can't match uh, ted and uh, and peter but we did so many stories together. Um, Anwar Sadat, we interviewed him together when he first came uh, to Israel from Egypt. Princess Diana's wedding we did together, Ronald Reagan's funeral, bicentennials. No one could ad-lib like Peter. Sometimes he drove me crazy because he knew every detail and I would find myself saying, but, but, but he really did. He, you would think that it was all scripted. He was so poetic. But it wasn't, and as you pointed out with, with things like 9-11, like I mean, he just, he just could go on with facts and, and, and with the greatest and most touching kind of, of emotion. Um, he just died much too young, and if this Ted gave the message, finish high school, I want to give the message, if any of you have kids who are smoking, for heaven's sakes, tell them that we lost Peter. Indeed. With 30 years, Barbara, I guess that makes you the junior kid on the block. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Not according to Ted, though. But, you know, we have, we have such wonderful memories, all of us, uh, with Peter, because not just he was our anchor, and we were very proud of him, and, and, and very proud of, of, of what he made ABC News, so that, I mean, no, I hate to brag, but we, were the, we are the winners in great part uh, because of Peter. But I don't know anyone who could command an audience with the kind of authority uh, that Peter had. It, it is, he, when he did World News, I mean, I know you write your own reports, and so, did, and so does Ted, but, but Peter had such a gift. I mean, he was just a superb writer. And as you said, I mean, it's just impossible to believe uh, that he's not going to be with us. He just died much too young, and, and the times that I was cross with him, I'd say, you're, you're hogging, Peter, you know, it's my turn. <sighs> well, I was right, but, but I look now and I think, look what he did for us, look how brilliant he was on the air, look at the facts he had, look how he carried us through, and if he talked more than I did sometimes, I forgive <laughs> him for every second. He was the consummate broadcaster, and so often you'd be sitting next to him 
as he did a special reporter, as he was broadcasting hour after hour, and he would pull something out of the air and you would think, where in the world yep. did he get that? How does he know that? We were all in awe of him. I'm also joined by my pal, Diane Sawyer, here in New York, who joins me in the studio. And Diane was talking just before we went on the air about A, the first time you met him, That's right. and B, how he would, and we can all relate to this, how he would quiz us when the oh. time came. Oh, you lived in terror because you knew you didn't know the pronunciation of the street in Beirut that he could tell you. And I was telling Charlie earlier that when I first arrived here at ABC and walked in, and he was in a special report about the Middle East, and he told the cameraman to turn around because he said, I know that if you go two streets over, there's a cafe there, and look behind that cafe, there's a park, and the trees are there. And I'm thinking, I am so out of my league, I've got to leave immediately. But it wasn't just, you know, watching him again, it wasn't just that this was someone with sand still in his shoes, which he had from the places he traveled, but what he said, that there is no absolute truth in the world for every group of people, and you have to keep listening to make sure you're hearing where help and hope and answers really lie. And I just hope that Casey and Elizabeth and Christopher all know that, that we're family too and that he really did make us raise our sights, as you said, Charlie. Well, for a long time, 22 years as sole anchor of World News Tonight, he had really become part of the news firmament. That's true, and, uh, and it's customary to say, you know, he will not come again. Peter Jennings will not come again. Diane Sawyer, thanks very much, and Barbara Walters and Ted Koppel as well. Just to repeat, Peter Jennings did die tonight of lung cancer at his home. And I want to read once again the statement that came from his family, saying Peter died with his family around him without pain and in peace. He knew he had lived a good life. And he did indeed. It ended, as Barbara said, prematurely at the age of 67, but a good life it was. David Weston, who is the president of ABC News, also put out a statement that I think bears repeating. Uh, David said tonight, as much as we miss him, Peter Jennings will always be with us at ABC News in our history, in who we are, in what we do, in the stories we care about. He was a graceful, he was an elegant man, he was a man of manners. He was also a terrific reporter and a great anchor for ABC News, as we say, our leader. And he is gone. I'm Charles Gibson in New York. Good evening. For continuing coverage of this story, stay with ABC News, abcnews.com, and ABC News Radio. This has been a special report from ABC News. We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress.